an in-between action, right? I go this way or this way, and like I said, I use it as a grip. You can change, you know, under the arm, all kind of options. Um, we also have this motion, right? So covering hands, right? So I, I kind of got this wrist and this elbow. This comes over the top. And I can use this in kind of the same way I'm using this action, right? I'm kind of trying to tighten up all the fella. And if he comes with the other arm, you can use it for wrapping. Um, you can be here, and as he tries to move, let me go for the neck. Um, you can use it this way, go over the arm, uh, this side like this, if you wanted to try to pull the dick down. Um, a lot of small options. Um, so he tries to cover hands on me, right? So it, it comes from like this kind of hole, right? If I can get the, the, if I can get this, that's wonderful. It's pretty kind of harder to do, but at least I want to try to get this, right? So it comes inside, right? It, this, you know, this can get pushed off, right? But if you think and you try to go back to the head, right? Yeah, it's all possible, right? It comes for me like this. You guys to push the arm off. Push the arm off. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you push that off. Yeah. yeah. You know, like I was doing on you, right? Push it across. Right? You do like this, and yeah, you get exposed, right? But if you can work it, right? He pushes it and try to open yourself up, right? Turn right away. Right? Lean here. He goes to push on it. And open the arm up right away. Okay. So. I'm going to go for the neck now, right? So think of it like this. As he reaches inside, I, I'm going to come up and I'm going to try to grab something. Again, I don't want to be like this. And I don't want to be pushing on him either, right? I want to kind of keep here like this so I don't give him anything to work with, right? If I start pulling on him right away, he can use that. If I start pushing on him right away, he can use that. But I kind of stay here and I just keep him taut, right? So we're going to go side to side. Right, so he reaches to grab, it doesn't matter, come inside, right? Come inside. He does it again, and inside, inside. Right, do it to him. Right. Yeah, put the head, and come down, he's going to tighten everything up, right? And do my way, I might use this, right? Or come back this way, right? It's, remember, it's always the counter to the, to the situation. As I come in, he's just going to move forward and split and hook. But it's going to tie it up really fast. Right? Like just from here? Right? This, this is all we want to work. Right? Right. right? He keeps pulling on me side to side. So, yeah, he's going to go side to side. And look, I don't have to do any kind of crazy movements, right? The, the guy comes forward with the hands. Just here, right? And change, right? Does it again. And here and here, right? This again and here, here, right? This is me. Here, inside. Yeah, like that, right? So he kind of like splits, he's splitting, and then he seizes right away. Split, seize. Split, seize. The more that you can yank the guy, right? He does it to me. The more I can yank him right away, I have to, I make him have to take a a base, right? He has to kind of post himself. And I should be able to take and use that to my advantage, right? Either attacking the leg that he posted on or the leg with the, with the least amount of weight on it. Uh, so, anyway, uh, let's just kind of look at the other side of this, right? So, reaching this way or even trying to hit you this way, this is great to kind of seize it. Uh, I can do it on one side, though, right? Instead of and it's coming to both sides of his head. He comes with uh, this movement on this side, and just come this way, right? I have, in a way, some less options. I can't go around the neck or over the arm, but I can use this to, like, tug him, to move him, or um, I can take this arm and try to come over the top of it, you know, these kind of actions like this. And I can do a lot of throws from here, too, right? I'm just right back in that inside position. So if he does it to me, right, he's just, both hands come up, and he's just kind of hooking on the outside, right? Um, hooking like 
Now from the back side, it's like this, you're holding like this, right? It's not the best grip, this is definitely a, a stronger control. Uh, but this is good, and you can also spread it out, right? You can do the opposite. Yep, yeah. with the hooks, getting on the inside. Yeah, sitting on the inside. A guy like this, like I said, you can spread it to kind of force into his arm. I'm pulling back on the other one. He does it again. Right? And he can pull me, right? He tugs. And this gives a good opportunity for things like neck mock and kicking, or if the guy uh, holds real good, he can come inside and do internet hooking, you know, like, just like this. You push me back. Small things. Now, let's look at elbow locking, and uh, we'll go back to this auto control, right? Traction like motion, right? So I'm either this one, right, or he's, or I'm this one, right? And we're going to kind of flow with these, right? So we're going to do the one first. So when I get this, then you're going to step in a clockwise fashion, right? If I have this arm, right, in this way. I have to go in a counterclockwise fashion, right? I'd be moving in this direction. If I had this this arm and I'm, I'm facing this way, I would go clockwise. Okay? So you just gonna do the, the block and the move. Now look, if he's really tall, I don't know that I recommend doing this motion. And if, you know, this would even if he's a few inches taller than him, this can pose a lot of problems. Or even trying to lift it under here. But you can draw with it, right? Even if he's taller, I can use it like this to try to tug. Uh, might be better to pick another move now that you're just really good at it, right? So he, he gets the control inside. Like this, right? And he's going to step with this leg and he's going to turn this way. Right? right? If he wanted to move me again, he'd just keep turning me, right? Just push me again, right? I did it to him. So move. Move. Right? Okay. So if we do it on the mats. We'll do it with bowing, which I, I like doing this with bowing. A lot of people, they do it with elbow oh, and kick, right? And you do it in your slide out forms, and you know, you'll see this motion. And it's this, basically, it's this lock, right? Um, so I'm going to get his arm. And I'm going to step and I pull. And what I do, right, I'm, he's going to base himself, right? As he does, he's turn back and broke. So the other one, right, if you think about it, you're this way. And I want to move him. I'm not going to move, right? In this regard, right, look, I, I stepped with the lead. I've got him under the arm. I'm going to kind of step with the rear, right? I'm going to step around and I'm going to extend this and I step. Right? I step. I step. Right? Jonathan does that to me. He's got my arm. Other direction. There you go. He's going to move me, right? Moves me. You've got to hybrid extend this, right? Now you can really hurt somebody's arm with either one of these two moves. Remember, if it's you're in a class setting, don't try to, you know, you, you can do this like this and go really hard and hurt the guy really bad. Same thing with this. You can yank on this, or remember it's a hinge, right? It goes like this. Some people do like this, right? And it'll, it'll go against the hinge. You can tear up tendons and uh, other connective tissue, ligaments, you can tear up the, the stabilizer muscles, the head of the muscles. Same, especially with this one, right? This kind of action. And uh, I know people like to do that in, when they're grappling or wrestling and stuff like that. But why? Why do you want to hurt the guy and he's out for a month or six weeks and two where you're at your, your training partner? Uh, you know, you just don't want you to go get in the way when you're, when you're practicing. So we're going to try this block with two moves, right? So I'm going to go one, and he's going to reach to grab with the other arm. I'm going to wrap, and I'm going to set this one, right? Comes back with this arm, I'm going to pull, goes with the other arm, and I pull. Right? Come back here a little bit and do it again. So I've got this arm, I step. He comes with the other arm, touches my lower waist. I 
wrap, and I step. It comes with this arm to try to get high. I step. It goes from my waistline low, I wrap, I step. What we already did horizontal throw, which is, again, if he's reaching for here, you can come underneath, right? A real good way. The guy's going for a hip throw, or he's just trying to get your waist, or trying to go for, you know, an embrace and picking you up. A uh, good way to stop the motion, and then again, if you can connect it with different things, or you can use it inside the leg or outside, you have the other arm. It's uh, it's it really gives you a lot of control over its upper body. So those are some, we'll say, simple uh, ways to to work this and to kind of play around with it. And uh, there's more. Right, and we could like dig into all of these very deeply. We could do like each each one or a couple of them. We could kind of make little videos over all of them. But uh, being more just trying to share with you the idea. Now, this kind of a flow drill. Um, we're we're going to kind of start like this, right? And he's on the inside. I'm going to switch, right? And he's going to come to the outside. Not unlike kind of like pummeling, right? Kind of the same premise. But I'm not going to be in there like this, honestly. I don't want to put pressure on it. Right? I'm just working my arms, and then I'm going to try to start adding other things. Right? So here, and he comes inside, right? I'll come outside. I'm going to go for his head, right? And he pulls through, and I go for the head again, right? Or, or I try to go for the arm, right? And I go for the outside, right? And I'll come back to the middle. And I'm just going to, I'm working these patterns with him, right? It's no different, the same thing. Practice the moves, right? All I'm trying to do is get a flow going for myself, right? And, uh, somewhere in there, see if you can take advantage of a of a spot, right? I'm not even I'm not even trying to. It's not so much that I'm trying to wrestle with him. But I'm, I'm trying to just get some controls. And if you do cheese out, this is a a good uh, additional. Uh, training thing that you can do to, to work, even if you do push hands. But if you're, if you're working, doing squat out, uh, you know, we have a lot of throws that, that we choose to trip and we take advantage of uh, the guy's legs or his arms. So not everything is about the torso, right? But I want to try to keep working the, the actions and Share with show with a person, and I'm not trying to be arrogant and me talking to you as I'm doing this with with Jonathan, but it's just reaction skills, right? I'm I'm not uh, it's not that I'm so super good at this thing or or what have you, right? But I'm used to to trying to gain the reaction and sensitivity from the person and. Uh, But if you have to think about it, right, if I have to think about it, it's going to make it harder on me to, to get a throw off, right? But the more that I can just feel, I don't feel anything, I'm going inside, right? If he doesn't change something, then I'm going to get a control, right? If I want to go for the waist, or I want to go under the arm, or... I want to go whoop, under, <laughs> over, whatever, right? Uh, anybody that does this for a period of time should easily be able to, to flow and to get a hold of the guy and all of that stuff. But uh, if you think about it, you know, let him tie you up, right? And, like, he goes to my neck, right? I even, well, maybe I use eyebrow monkey, right? Or, uh, pull that down, right? Or a turn on the guy. That's more important than I'm going to throw this dude, I'm not going to let him throw me, break it apart, right? This kind of stuff is a bridge to you getting better grips, right? Now, in, you know, in Swatch Out, in the sport, we're using a jacket, right? And uh, that's all good, uh, but. Uh, if you were utilizing some you know, street situation, or maybe you're an MMA guy, and uh, you're, 
you're wanting to be able to uh, uh, get better grips, maybe do some throws, or uh, give me a little more resistance. I, I, I get in there, right? Yeah. I'm trying to get my waist. <laughs> right, uh, but can you work your footwork? Can you work the grips? Don't just always focus on the throw. You've got what makes the throw work is the right angle or position, the right balance, the right type of grip and control, and all of that kind of stuff, right? And, uh, I want to be able to uh, train that, right? Uh, and you'd be surprised at how these things will kind of float out of you as you do, give you more resistance. Keep pushing there, right? They can work hard. People are going, ah, oh, he's, he's just playing around and but, right? I keep trying to get my grips. Once they change on me, all of that stuff is fine, right? But look, I can work the counter. Well, you know, you do this and this, and you just randomly when you get this thing, the guy's trying to get your head. Oh crap, that kind of worked for me. And you keep trying to work it, and you can improve on counters to your actions and all of that kind of stuff, right? But remember, keep it simple, right? It's the uh, you got around the head, around the waist, over the arm, under the arm, and then you've got different ways to control this arm, right? Or control this arm. Or control this arm. The more you work those things, and there's more. I mean, there's, I'm, this is not all of them, but look, I'm always, I want to try to control this dude's arms, right? You know, if he's got my arms. <laughs> the same thing with the jacket, though. There's all kinds of groups and controls, and in the next couple of weeks, I'm going to make another video using the jacket. But look, I'm not, I'm not like putting any, I'm not like uh, fighting this guy, right? You waste all your energy, right? I'm just in here and fool with this guy. If he wants to move me around, then, right? Just moving me. I don't care, right? I'm moving around. Right? When I do it, I'm not, I drop weight. I, I change, uh, change the angle, right? I don't. I'm not trying to fight it hard. He wants to move me around. Let him, right? Let him pull me. He, he wants to drain his energy. I don't care. Remember, if you're doing it for sports, right? Uh, you know, part of it is uh, your your endurance, uh, your conditioning can outwin the other situation a lot of times, right? Right. You have these grips just off the wrist. These, these, these. You can get all these too, but don't fight it. If I get this, and he goes to start trying to, I don't know, go my head or my waist or whatever, don't fight it like this, right? Forget that. He goes from my head or my waist, do something else, run right away, do that him, right? You get something like this, and he, I don't care, he goes with you the way, right? You go right into something else, use it like a trap, right? So this, these kind of grips, these grips, these grips, Right? So that's wrist stuff. This kind of stuff like I was talking about. This stuff. This stuff with the elbows. Then we've got rotator cuffs and uh, like you know, this way. Work the guy. You know what? How can you do that? Right? This kind of stuff, right? But tied to it. Just again. He put some more effort into it, right? The more effort he puts, the more I can relax. And I'm glad I asked him. He'll just pick him up. Huh? He can. You're right. He can do all kinds of stuff. I can't do it. But if I stay calm and I stay relaxed when I'm, I'm working these pieces, if I get him moving, right? Remember, it's like in Wing Chun, it says, if, if, he, if he moves, he gives me a gift. Well, that can be that can be on him, right? And, and I can I can help him to move, right? He's, he starts to move. He takes less of my energy and me to be able to work, right? He starts moving, but if I have to use all my energy. <laughs> if 
if you look, I have my, my things that I like to work, and if you work this kind of stuff, you will too. Right? You'll develop by neutralizing those actions you like to do. Big thing though is you know, if he moves, he gives me a gift. At the same time though, that's kind of a, uh, a crux, right? If I can keep moving and I don't get my make myself too stuck, uh, right? He gets me moving. As soon as I go to post my weight, my base, he can take advantage of it, right? You let it with weight or you let it without. Right, he's got the arm, he needs to do something immediately. He moves his leg. Oh, <laughs> so, it's, this is fun. Uh, I'm not trying to be arrogant or I'm so great at this or anything. If you put your time into there, you can be better at this than me. It's just, it's just a fun game, right? But you're learning at the same time. It's processing in your brain. You can take this to another level. I say that because like, I also teach Wing Chun. And uh, if you look at the, the mechanics of like chi sao, right? You're doing this stuff. You're making it. You're, you're attacking off of your bridge, right? This just closes the distance even more, right? I'm in here and working this guy. If you're a Wing Chun guy and you want to learn some controls, or grips, or how to do, it, then add this, add this little training. But later. You're in here and you're working this stuff. I can just as easily go for a punch and if he knows what he's doing, he parries it and then he, uh, then he can work his right? He, then he can work his action. Man, look, punch, right? It would be it's more put out there, right? Somebody on the street, usually they start blowing punches at you, they try to grab something, they try to push you and pull you, okay? and then from there, whether they know how to do it or not, most of the time they don't. You trip and you get you fall down because the leg is just in the right spot. Sometimes they'll pick people up and slam them. If you train this, it will improve your ability to wrestle. It's why your competition. It'll improve your ability out there. And if you like to wrestle more without a jacket, right? Without a jacket, this will help you a lot, right? Just remember when you're doing this. I'm really trying to go for his waist, right? Or I come high for his head, or under the arm, over the arm, I'm locking the joints, or I'm grabbing the ribs, right? Those kind of actions. I really want to work this stuff. I'm far out, really. It's easy for him, like, if he, if he follows this, like, pulls a hand, right? And then take it, he takes it in hand, he goes for a throw, he's got to get grip. <laughs> You'll have a way that you like doing this, right? Maybe you like to go for hands, but don't make it a stalemate. It's boring when you do that, right? You don't like this out here. Screw all that. You never get good at grappling with the guy, right? So it's no different than the, than the, the men and women that do BJJ or they do MMA. They get on the floor, they work a position. What I'm showing you is the basic same premise of what they're doing on the ground. They're vying for control in a position or they're neutralizing something to try to get that submission. I'm not necessarily looking for the submission, I'm looking for the throw, right? Great training, it really stimulates the person, right? Here, like, he needs to think. Do it slow sometimes, right? He can pull right down on my, on my shoulder. Let's pull straight down. Now, I, I, I change my angle, right? So you think with Tai Chi guys. You don't push hands. It's, you, you got, sometimes the guys make it way, way too mechanical. If you're working stuff like this, it will really show that you, you can push, pull, neutralize, yield. <laughs> if, you, if you can't do this, then most of it is just mechanical. You're slowing something down. Same thing with Wing Chun guys. Some of the Wing Chun guys out there, they really, really keep on working 